Well, I believe that in the current, um, the current philosophy of how we move ahead with um, health as a development issue, it's very important for us to deal with what is now referred to so commonly as shared partnerships in which, for example, government, the civil society, and the private enterprises collaborate in moving forward agendas and priorities for health and development. In particular, in the case of, of um, developing countries, I think it is very critical for the business interests to be part of the um, fit for um, purpose programs, in particular those that help us to understand more clearly how you develop models for workplace interventions, how you deal with research capabilities, how you advocate for increased access to um, critical public goods like, um, like antiretroviral drugs for people living with AIDS, and how, generally speaking, you confront uh, the world in negotiating um, preferential treatment and, and health and equity, especially for those who are in need. I, I think that um, UNAIDS has a, a, a set of objectives, whereas let us think about 30 years ago mm -hmm. when we just could conceive of programs which had to deal with, with treatment and to a lesser extent prevention. Now actually looking forward, I think UNAIDS is at the forefront of conceiving an agenda for elimination. It is an optimistic objective of, for example, eliminating mother-to-child transmission by 2015, of accelerating um, the agenda for human rights for people living with AIDS in the context of the broader human rights agenda, and of dealing with issues related to um, reduction of the abuse of women or, or increasing the, the rights of, of women in, in, in the whole health agenda. So UNAIDS really is um, now looking forward um, to, I would say, a world free of AIDS. And we can do that largely because what is happening now we see with the interventions of, um, of modern science, um, with the uh, programs such as uh, that we saw an award um, given on the, the pre-PACs uh, on circumcision for men. We now have programs which we did not have 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, which would lead us to think forward on, on, a pros on the prospects of elimination of HIV. Well, um, as a UN Special Secretary General Special Envoy for HIV AIDS, um, I'm primarily responsible for uh, championing the UN AIDS outcomes um, emerging uh, from the UN uh, high-level meeting on HIV AIDS um, in November last year. And there are quite a few of them. Um, many of them I have addressed in the, in the um, issue related to elimination. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, um, we are also, because we are dealing with the Caribbean, focusing on some of the major, I would say, priorities that are relevant, most relevant to the Caribbean. And they overlap with the UN um, high-level outcomes. Um, and they include the elimination of mother-to-child transmission and, again, increasing access to care um, using uh, prevention and treatment as comparable objectives for, for reducing the spread of the disease and indeed reducing stigma and discrimination, which would also um, relate to the human rights agenda. So as UN um, Special Secretary General Special Envoy, what I help to do is to promote those priorities, but to work with, for example, the regional um, entities such as the Pan-Caribbean Partnership Against HIV AIDS and the UN Regional Office um, that um, together help to promote. But also what we are concerned about is that we need to deal with some specificities as they relate to, to, specific, to countries in the Caribbean and to assist those countries that are lagging behind to come up to speed in the agenda, especially 
uh, an agenda for the low-hanging fruit of eliminating mother-to-child transmission by 2015. Indeed, as UN envoy, I'm working with the stakeholders so that the Caribbean could be the first region in the world to eliminate mother-to-child transmission. I, I think that um, th this is a very important question because um, what we ha have discovered that there are inequities in the, um, in the, the prevalence uh, and indeed what we have discovered in the Caribbean as in the case uh, of most of the developing world that the, 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 um, the level of information education and communication required to reach pockets of poverty in the inner cities and in the rural areas um, demand more effort um, than those areas where um, you have accessibility to schools and so on. So in fact, the, the main purpose of some of the advocacy programs and the, the uh, information and education programs through, for example, the schools, health and family life education, and even utilizing the social media to reach groups in the language that they understand because sometimes standard English is not necessarily the, the greatest tool for communicating with those areas that are deprived and poor. And so um, in that context, special programs targeted to those areas um, are required. And that is the thrust of some of the strategies that are, are being used. I want to say one thing that in um, the past month as UN Envoy, Special Envoy, and this would illustrate and answer your question, um, my visits to the Caribbean indicated that we um, have to pay specific attention to the vulnerable groups. But the vulnerable groups really um, comprise in the main the youth. Um, the youth, and we incorporated in that the youth in the marginalized area. And what we have done is to develop a, a synergy among the youth organizations in the Caribbean and have them involved in activities like peer-to-peer -peer, um, counseling and utilizing the social media to reach pockets, um, dealing with edutainment, using the blend between art and culture to devise. And those programs have been very creative, including, I say the word creative, a creative approach to sexual education, which sometimes um, is frightening for older generations that do not understand we have to change behavior by radical interventions. The youth understand that. And therefore, in this role, we are putting a lot of effort on the vision, the creativity of the youth to reach those areas of poverty and marginalization that we would normally miss.